Baseball fans, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the owner of the New York Mets. That's right, none other than Brewers' Reese Hoskins. For those of you that don't know, ownership was handed over to him just a couple days ago. And we're going to be getting some background info on our new owner leading up to the exchange. Now he was drafted in 2014 in the fifth round by the Philadelphia Phillies. And in August of 2017, the number six overall prospect would make his debut where he showed off his power in just 50 games. He raked in 18 home runs and 45 RBIs while also drawing 37 walks, a very disciplined power hitter. Something rare to see. Then in 2018, he would continue off his hot start in 2017 where he hit an average of 246, but he hit 34 bombs while collecting in 96 ribbies. Hoskins hit the third most home runs from a first baseman that season as well. However, in 2019, Hoskins would take a step back and he had his worst season to date as a big leaguer, hitting a career low 226 with a 454 slugging. He still did manage to smash 29 home runs and lead the National League in walks with 116, showing his plate discipline. His 2020 and 2021 campaign would be pretty mid, hitting just 245 and then 247 with fair slugging and home run numbers. But he became a Phillies legend in 2022, where he hit 246 with 30 home runs this season in 156 games. But he would really come alive in the playoffs. His average in the postseason would drop off a cliff to a measly 159, but of all his 11 hits in the postseason, six of them would be dingers. What stands out the most, though, would definitely be his efforts in getting the Phillies to the World Series in their NLCS win over the Padres. Hoskins would only have four hits this entire series, but all four were home runs. In Game 4 of the NLCS, the Phillies up 2-1. to one. They looked to take the commanding 3-1 series lead Hoskins would deliver. He would go 2-4 for four with two home runs and four ribbies to propel Philly to a 10-6 win over the Padres. And in Game 5, he broke the game wide open in the third with a 424-foot nuke to give Philly a 2-0 lead, where they would go on to win the game and the series, advancing to the World Series. They would lose in six games to the Astros, but it would be a historic year for Hoskins and the Phillies. Then in 2023, Reese would tear his ACL in spring training and miss the entirety of the season. A devastating setback as he would not be able to continue off his heroic run in the last year's postseason. Hoskins would then enter free agency and sign a two-year $34 million deal with the Brewers, which includes an opt-out after the first year. And that brings us to the ownership exchange of the New York Mets. And that brings us to the slide. Reese Hoskins goes sliding in the second base. It was an aggressive slide. I don't know if it was overly egregious, but, I mean, Jeff McNeil seems to think otherwise. McNeil then drops the ball, so no double play is made, and is just visibly upset. He he is mad. And the worst part about it for the Mets is that McNeil is still jarring at Hoskins, and they're going at it. They have to be separated. Then Hoskins goes back to his dugout, and McNeil is still bitching about it. And then Hoskins looks at him, and he's like, cry. Cry, buddy, cry. Hoskins don't care. He, he doesn't care. Then in the next game, in typical Mets fashion, Hoskins hits a bomb, gets some RBIs, and then after that, the Mets decide to throw at him, and the pitcher gets ejected. Like, he already hit the home run off you guys. You should have done it his first at bat after that. Like, I don't know. You know what? It's okay, though. The Mets got him back. They got swept against the Brewers. Reese Hoskins is the villain that the Brewers need. McNeil seemed to be a lot more upset about it than he really needed to be. I don't think it was that terrible of a slide. And, like, you let that go. You know, you have your, your words. You move on. It's whatever. But it just turned into a whole thing. And the Mets, once again this year, are just an absolute dumpster fire. Meanwhile, the Brewers are sitting pretty at 6-2 and two right now. And Francisco Lindor is like 1 for 34 at the plate or something like that. So the Mets are going to mat. In conclusion, Reese Hoskins owns the Mets and the Mets poverty franchise. Um, it's uh, pretty pathetic. Will the Mets be able to turn their season around, having one of the highest payrolls again in the MLB? I highly doubt it.